color grading. That's one of those things I get asked about a lot. And DaVinci Resolve's color features are some of the best on the planet. And that color page that they have, people use that to make some of the most famous movies on the planet. That's how good the color tools in DaVinci Resolve are. But today I want to talk to you about a very specific area of the color page, and that's the scopes. I think it's something that can be really confusing because you look at them and they just look like crazy graphs that you can't quite understand. I did a video recently where I talked about everything you'll see in the lower left of the color page, the primaries, the color wheels, the color bars, the log wheels. If you haven't seen that video, I do recommend that you watch that first because there's some information that we covered there that we'll be referencing here. It'll make it easier for you to understand. Now, right off the bat, I wanna make sure you know what we're talking about today. Color grading in specific. Color correction tends to be one thing where your footage might look a little off and you're trying to correct it to get it more balanced. Color grading, on the other hand, is when you're trying to bring attitude to that footage, utilizing the color spectrum to make sure that the footage impacts the viewer in a certain way. There's actually an entire psychology to the art of color. Color can help the people that you're trying to reach, your target audience or your viewers, feel a certain way about what they're looking at. Filmmakers use color grading to create specific emotional responses from their audience. Warm colors like red and yellow can evoke feelings ranging anywhere from warmth and comfort to anger and hostility. Cooler colors like blue and green, those can often evoke feelings ranging anywhere from calmness to sadness. A romantic comedy might lean more towards warm colors, where an action-adventure movie might lean towards more of the cooler colors. Even other things like the amount of color and the contrast, the saturation, can deeply impact the way people feel when they watch your footage. And some of the tools that we have in Resolve to better understand all of those elements and see how we're modifying them are the scopes. First off, we have to talk about what scopes are. Scopes are basically graphs that are just taking all the information regarding the color and the luminescence, like the brightness or the darkness of your video clip in any given frame, and trying to put them in graphs that might make sense to you so you can understand what's going on inside of that footage color-wise. They can also be a bit like guardrails, stopping you from making decisions that might actually be bad decisions because looking at your monitor might show you one thing when what is actually happening in the footage is another. Now in DaVinci Resolve, there's basically four different types of scopes. And if you are on the color page and you go to the lower right and you have this middle icon selected, it'll open up your scopes. And if you look at the drop down menu here, I am currently on what they call the parade scope. But if I hit the drop down, you'll see that there are actually different types of scopes. There's a waveform scope. There's also a vector scope. There's a histogram scope. And there's another scope called CIE chromaticity. That's a tricky one. It's a mouthful to even say that. Now let's take this slow so that none of this overwhelms you. I really want you to get a better understanding of what these scopes are and simplify them in a way that you can make sense of them and use the ones that make sense for you. Now in a previous video, I talked a lot about the parade scope. It's a great scope that basically takes the entire piece of footage and breaks down what you're looking at from light to dark, and it breaks it into three sections based on color. They're basically looking at the exact same footage, but it's looking at just the reds and just the greens, and then just the blues in that footage. Now, one cool thing about this lower scope section when you have it activated is there's actually an expand feature right here that if you click on that, it'll pop those scopes up. I have them down below, but sometimes it'll pop up somewhere else on the screen but it's basically giving you a pop-up window just for those scopes so you can get a little deeper into them. Now, if you notice right here, I actually have two scopes. If you look at the top right of this particular window, this pop-up window, you'll see there are the options to have one scope, a single scope. There's the option to have two scopes. That's where I was. There's an option to have four scopes. I can open up four of these. And there's another option to go up as high as nine. But if you look, I can't click that right now. It seems to be grayed out. Another thing you have to understand about DaVinci Resolve, it'll only open up as many scopes as are available for the stretch and skew of that on your window. They don't want to give you nine scopes if you've got the pop-up window really small. So let me quickly show you how to adjust the pop-up window. If you just go down to the lower right corner of this pop-up window, left click and drag, you can change the size. It'll only let you go so small based on how many windows are currently open. Right now I've got four, so I can't go any smaller than this, but I can make it bigger. And if I want to move it around, I can just left click, grab the very top bar and move that where I want. 
Now, if I expand this big enough, you will notice that the nine option is now enabled. I can click that and I can get up to nine screens of different scopes. How's that for confusing? Too many scopes already, right? But you can do a single scope. You can just click the single bar and then have one scope up here and resize it to where you'd like. Just understand that if you wanna have more than one scope and it's not working, it's only because you have the scope too small. When I shrink it down as small as possible, you'll see that I can't click two, four, or nine. You just have to expand it so that these other options start working. Pretty simple, right? Try not to make it too confusing. So let's go with one scope right now. This is the one that we started with. It's the parade scope. And if you look in the upper right of any of these scopes, there is an option to modify it slightly. I wanna to talk to you about that. They give you options for RGB. That's sort of the default setting. RGB being red, green, and blue, which is what we're seeing on screen. But you can also do Y RGB. You would think that if they added Y, that might be yellow, right? Yellow, red, green, and blue. In fact, the Y actually stands for the Luma mix, the luminescence or the brightness. So if you switch to a Y RGB skull, they'll actually add this little white section. And that's just the overall brightness of what's going on, regardless of color. There is a Y CBCR that deals with a little more overlay and it's a little tricky to understand. I won't go down that rabbit hole today. I personally recommend just for starting out, choose RGB, or if you wanna see a brightness scale, you can add Y RGB. Now, in any one of these scopes, you'll see that there's basically the colors on screen here, and then there's the graph itself, these numbers and these lines. You have the ability to adjust the brightness of each. I could turn that color up or down for the RGB to see that a little bit brighter or not as bright if it was a little too much. And then I can control this graticule Am I even saying that right? It's basically the graph. It's the graph lines that you're seeing overlaid. If you want them brighter or you want them dimmer, you can control that right here. Now let's look at some of the other scopes that I haven't talked about. Let's switch over to the waveform scope. And if you're looking at this right now, you might say, well, that looks very different, Daniel. Now a waveform graph basically reads the image from left to right. Let me see if I can shrink this down to get it to like about the same size. If you look, this is basically reading that image that it sees above it, and it's reading it from left to right. Her legs right here, that's actually what's going on inside of this frame. As you can see, her boots are much darker, so they're gonna be pushing all that RGB very low and down near the lowest or darker colors of the spectrum. And all the other colors around her, that bright pavement, the bright brick, is gonna be much brighter, and we're gonna see those up in the higher brighter bands, more towards the whites. So all you're seeing is that's looking at this particular frame in this video clip in this moment, wherever I have the playhead, and it's reading it from left to right. If you notice as her legs move, you can actually see that represented in this waveform sculpt. See as her legs separate, it's literally looking at the entire image left to right. You can almost see her legs moving. Now the next scope is actually called the vector scope, and this one's very different. It actually looks at color in a circle, and the center is considered very balanced color, where you have sort of even amounts of all the things going on, light and dark and color, and the more you skew to one way or another, maybe making the footage more red or more green or brighter or darker, you'll see that center blob start to move in different directions. The fourth scope is called histogram, and it again does the exact same thing, just in a different way. It's looking at the entire image, and it's telling us how many darks, mids, and brights there are across the spectrum. And then it breaks it down by the individual colors themselves. And as I move the playhead back and forth, you won't see it change too much because there's not a lot of difference between the frames. That's very different than what we saw in the waveform, which moved based on left to right what was happening across the screen. You could see those dramatic changes that followed her feet. This is probably more similar to the parade scope that does a similar thing. The histogram doing it in a more horizontal fashion. The last scope we have is called the CIE Chromaticity, which is still a mouthful. And it was actually created in 1931 by the Commission on Illumination. Yeah, that's actually a thing. Apparently there was a bunch of scientific studies trying to understand out of all the available colors in the spectrum, how much of them does our eye actually pick up? And it created this graph that's sort of a weird oblong shape that curves off to the left. There's a lot of description to explain exactly why this might be important. 
But I'm not going to dive into that in this particular video because I think it distracts from what you actually need to learn. And that's the basic scopes and what they do. Now, I've got two clips here that I actually downloaded from today's sponsor, Storyblocks. Storyblocks is an affordable asset house where you can get things like B-roll, music, sound effects, and images that you can use royalty-free in your next YouTube video. And Storyblocks just added an entire section of templates specifically for DaVinci Resolve that include animated titles, transition, motion graphics, and more. Now, I've been using Storyblocks for years before they ever became a sponsor because I actually really like the quality of the product they offer. I also like the fact that for one affordable price, you can get access to as many assets as you need. There are no download limits about how many videos that you can use at any given time period, how many images you can use, or how many pieces of music or sound effects that you can get from Storyblocks. Storyblocks has really made it simple. Once you sign up for an account, the sky's the limit. You can get to work using as many of the high quality assets that Storyblocks has there ready for creators just like you. Everything that I'm using here in this video today, I got from Storyblocks. I'll leave a link down below if you want to go check out Storyblocks for yourself today. Now, I've got two clips here. One clip is of a woman who looks to be walking through perhaps some form of city area where there's pavers in the broad daylight. Another clip I have is of the ocean, which is taken either at sunset or sunrise. I can't quite tell the difference. Now, when it comes to color grading, what you want to be thinking about is the kind of emotion you might want to be drawing from your potential viewer. Subtle things like the amount of contrast in an image can totally change the way that footage feels. High contrast might feel very intense or energetic, whereas a lower contrast image might seem a little more mellow or a little more dreamlike. Let's take this ocean clip, for example. It has kind of a peaceful appearance to it. But if I change the color grading of that clip, I can change the entire mood of it. I can make it feel like it's more at night, make it feel more gloomy and a little more ominous. It's the exact same piece of footage I got from Storyblocks. I've just modified the color grading on it to make it feel that way. Now, if you were to look at one of the scopes to see what I did, you'd be able to see that represented really easily right here. Now in the upper right, just above my preview window, I can actually turn off all of the color correction that I've added by just clicking this single icon. And it also allows us to see the original scope view of the footage before I did any color grading. And even the lowest darks in this image are still quite elevated. It's a lot of mid-range and high tones up in here. I've done most of the color grading on this in the primaries color wheel section. And you'll see that what I did is the very lowest of lows. I've dropped them quite a bit back. Here you can see that motion. When I left click and drag on the overall luminescence, which is that white bar to the left of the darkest colors, the lift, you can see I've pulled those way down by dragging to the left and it makes that footage much more ominous looking. The mids I've also modified, as I brought the darkest of darks down, I had to compensate that by opening up some of the mids to make it feel a little bit brighter so it still didn't become a super dark piece of footage. And the brights, you can see I've also lifted the top ceiling by left clicking and dragging on the gain. That's the highest, brightest of the brights. And I've left click, drag, bring that up just to bring a little more brightness into. The offset, you can see I've pulled the red way out of it. If I brought those back up, you'll see the sky starts getting more red. There's more reflection of those reds and pinks into the ocean and the water. I also elevated the greens and blues in the overall master, the offset, because that really helped bring that feeling of darkness, those greens and blues, the cooler colors forward. Here's the parade scope. This is the one I use the most. You can see the reds are pulled way down and the greens and the blues are elevated. If I go back to the original footage with no color grading, you can see it's much more balanced. Everything is filling up the entire scale. There's actually a lot less blue than there is reds and greens from the darkest to the lightest tones in this particular piece of footage. If I look at the histogram, here is the original piece of footage before I did any color grading. Lots of light areas. See the luminosity in all of the reds and the greens and the blues? You can see I pulled everything way back, especially the reds. And you can see that here if you're looking at it in the histogram scope. We're looking at the exact same information just in different ways. And whichever one makes sense to you, use that scope. Use more than one scope. Use them in combination to better understand what's going on in your footage so you don't overcorrect and make something too dark or too light 
and this can help you decide what the right move is. If you have any questions about any of these color scopes, please ask me in the comments below. And if you wanna learn more about how to use DaVinci Resolve to edit your YouTube videos, click on the video that I have on screen now or the ones that I'll link down below. Peace.